Welcome to KNBU TV. I'm Melissa King and this is Inside Baker. We will be featuring Spring Break this week. We will be having guests Ira Despain, our campus minister, Ryan Boyer, our student senate president, and we will also be talking to a travel agent from Lawrence, Joanne Candle. But first up, we have Ira talking about his trip to Alabama. Hi, Ira. Um, well, thank you for coming. No, my pleasure to be here. Thanks for asking me, Elise. Um, a spring break is right around the corner. Um, I've heard that you have exciting plans. Um, what do those plans entail? Well, this year is uh, another year that I'll be taking a work team to Baldwin County, Alabama, to work in cooperation with Habitat for Humanity and, uh, and helping to build a house there for someone who needs a home. Okay, now how many years have you been doing this? The first time we went down to uh, Alabama was 1993, so it's been quite a few years now. Wow. Now, how exactly did you find out about um, Baldwin Cal County? Well, Baldwin County, Alabama is, in fact, the birthplace of my mother. Her parents uh, farmsteaded that area back around 1915, and my mom was born there. And so uh, when I came to this position at Baker, uh, it is a common practice for campus ministers across the country to, to uh, provide alternative spring break opportunities for students. And so I just called my cousin, who still lives in that area, and, and he gave me the name and telephone number of the person with Habitat for Humanity. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, so you've been doing this for a long time. You leave on Saturday, is that correct? That's right. We leave on Saturday morning this year, and we'll return uh, Friday the 16th. Okay, so you'll be there about a week. Mm -hmm. And about half the time we'll be spending doing the habitat work, and then the other half of the time uh, we'll be spending time on the beach of the Gulf of Mexico and doing some swimming and some sightseeing and some, some recreational activities. Okay, so you leave at 7. You'll get there in the afternoon. That's right. We'll be on the beach by 1 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, the, time, the time is uh, going very slowly this week for all the students who are going. Right. Um, how many people are going this year? We have seven students, uh, plus uh, me and Susan Wade uh, from the Career Development Center is the uh, female sponsor this year, and she's also taking her 12-year-old daughter, Angelica. Oh, that's good. So okay. ten of us all together. Okay. And you'll be working with Habitat for Humanity. Right. And you will be helping build a house. Right. Okay. Is there anything else that you'll be doing while you're down there with Habitat or? Um, well, we don't know yet exactly. They're, they have two sites uh, currently under construction. Okay. And we're not going to find out until later on this week, just before we leave, which one of the two sites uh, they'll be working on. It depends on uh, uh, some licensing issues there. Uh, so we'll, we'll either be doing some final stages of uh, work, like uh, landscape and putting in cabinets and so forth, or, the, or we may be doing some initial work of digging trenches for footings and so forth. So a lot of manual labor, for yes, sure. Yes, yes, it is manual labor. And my, my agreement with the students when we go is that uh, when it's time to uh, get on the bus to go to do the work, that they be there and that they uh, participate fully in the activities. And we've never had a, a problem with that. Uh, it's when it's time to work, we work hard. When it's time to play, we play hard. Okay, so a great experience for sure. I think so. Okay, so you're working about half the time. Yes. You're playing for about half the time. Mm -hmm. What exactly do you want the students to learn, and what do you want them to gain from this experience? There's all kinds of things that, uh, that students, I think, get from the experience. Uh, one is to meet some wonderful people, because Baldwin County, in many ways, the, the Habitat program there is, uh, is led by senior citizens who have moved to that area in retirement. And so it's a chance for students to get to meet some people, and for people to get to meet some college students who want to do something constructive during spring break. Uh, we also learned some, some really good construction techniques. Uh, in the years past, we've put up siding on the outside of a house. Uh, we've done sheetrock work, electrical work. We've done framing. We've put in tile flooring so students get a chance to learn some, some good home repair and home improvement kind of techniques as well. And it's a time for students also to get to know each other. Uh, these seven students know each other a little bit so far, but it's a way for, for us to spend some time working and playing together in a way apart, away from the campus uh, as we sort of bond as a group. Okay, you said that there will be a lot of things they'll be having to do, and it just depends when you get down there what they'll be doing. What things do they need to know before they go down there? Do they have to know any of those skills, or can they learn it all on the spot? They can learn them all on the spot. We don't put any, ask anybody to do anything without supervision if they haven't done it before. Okay. Uh, the only requirements that they need are a hat, uh, some work gloves, some solid shoes, and oh yeah, some suntan oil. <laughs> 
Okay, now how did students at Baker find out about this great experience? Uh, usually in the fall, every year, I send out a campus-wide uh, email inviting people, publicizing it, and then people email me back and get on the list. Okay, what about cost? Does it cost the students at Baker a lot, or is it just like a normal spring break trip? It, the cost this year for a student is $440. Okay. And that includes uh, transportation to Alabama and back. Uh, it also includes food while we're there and transportation while we're there. Um, the, uh, the cost is also underwritten partially uh, by some funds in the university minister's office. We, the important thing is we want to make the, the trip as affordable as we can because it's not, a, it's not simply for people who can afford it, but it's for people who want to go and learn these skills and have this experience. Okay, you said your numbers are smaller this year than in the past. Um, this is the smallest group we've ever had. There are seven participants. Uh, last year there were about 20. The first year that we went there were 23. Uh, sometimes there's been as many as 30 to 35. So this is the smallest group we've ever had. Um, the, the good news with that is that it does allow us to fly. Uh, if we have uh, 30 to 35, we take an over-the-road bus, an 18-hour bus ride. Um, but this year it's e more economical for us right. to fly 10 people than it is for us to, to have a bus that would hold 47. So that's a good and a bad. Mm -hmm. um, since the numbers are so small, does that hurt? the work down there that you'll be doing? Is it um, a negative issue or is it okay? I think it's, a, it's an okay thing that we'll all be able to work on the same spot. Other years when we've had more people, we've had to divide the groups up and work on different sites. This year we'll be able to keep everybody uh, together. Okay, so it's, it's a good thing. It's, it's, a, it's, a mix, it's a mixed blessing. I think that uh, I know that the choir is planning a trip to England next uh, January and that's going to take some money from students and so there were a lot of competing factors this year that, that kept students away from, from this experience, I think. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming, Ira. I really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Elisa. Thank you, Ira. We will now be going to the field with Kristen Babcock as she is reporting on how to have a safe spring break. It is only a couple of days until spring break, but the Department of Student Health Services is giving students a reminder as to how to remain healthy and safe while on spring break. Okay. Students who entered Harder Union immediately heard music from the Baker University Jazz Ensemble and got a chance to visit several booths informing them about health and safety. Some of those booths included an age projection program to see the damaging effects of sun tanning or to learn about the risks of drinking and driving. In addition to signing a pledge promising not to drink and drive, students also got to try out goggles that simulate the effects of intoxication. Just to get awareness out because uh, drinking and driving, I think, uh, I think the mortality rate increases during like spring break, so they're just trying to make sure to get awareness out. <laughs> Participants in this event, sponsored by Student Health and Counseling Services, received beach balls, frisbees, and were entered in for door prizes. Director of Student Health Services, Ruth Sarna, says it is all to get students to think about fun and health happening at the same time. Um, I guess to attract the students. Um, it's, uh, it's a time when um, I know they've had lots of finals and the midterms and tests and, and papers and everything. And uh, uh, we try to do a little bit of activity like in the fall when we do the stress-free zone. Well, this is maybe sim similar to that to kind of help them uh, think that we care about them and uh, want to do something nice for them. Now, Nurse Ruth mentioned that she believes that this event has been a part of Baker for about 12 to 15 years. Back to you, Alyssa. I'm Kristen Babcock, KNBU-TV. Thank you, Kristen, for that report. Up next, we will be talking to our Student Senate President along with a travel agent from Lawrence. But first, a few messages.